Uh, g'day everybody, welcome to this week's learning update. Um, this week I've got David Pace with me and David's the um, Communities and Recovery Coordinator. Um, I'm coming to you today from the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Welcome Dave, where are you coming from? G'day Anthony, thank you. I'm coming from the lands of the Yadmithang people. Cool, awesome. And this week we're going to have a bit of talk about um, the recovery work that you guys are doing and we're really interested to hear what's happening in terms of recovery around the state. Sure, thanks Anthony. Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk to that. So what's, uh, what's happening in different parts of the state? So what's happening down in East Gippsland, for example? Uh, yeah, so what, what we're seeing is the recovery of communities has been quite mixed. Even though it's two years on, what we keep saying is that recovery is a really long journey. And often, even though that we're there for a couple of years, it's still not enough to really support everyone in their recovery journey. Um, so it's been quite a mixture. We've got to remember that communities are made up of hundreds, sometimes thousands or a dozen people uh, and really varies in size. And every one of those people is going through something different. Um, because of COVID especially, uh, it means that one of the most important things being just being able to relate to and talk to other people in person and feel that connection again has been really quite difficult. So some people are still saying that even though it's been two years since the fires, it still feels like the first six months. Wow, that's that's remarkable. And, and you were telling me the other day that there's not much housing stock, particularly in East Gippsland, that's actually been rebuilt after those fires. Yeah, so the latest statistic that we got from DFFH was that only around 10% of housing stock that was lost in the fires has been rebuilt. Wow, that's that's, that's a rebuilt. frightening figure, isn't it, really? Yeah, so some people are coming to terms with the cost of that rebuild and whether they can actually afford it anymore. Wow, yes, look, I've, some friends of mine are actually just doing some renovations and the, the cost of that's gone up really significantly and they didn't have the house burnt down. So I can only imagine what it's like if you've had insurance and you've had a payout and and then costs have risen. So that's yeah, that must be really challenging for those communities. Yeah, and then policy changes and restrictions on building will make it even more difficult and for some prohibitively expensive. Wow, it's, it's really challenging. So David, what What's the recovery team up to? Have you got a couple of examples of, of some good work that the team has been doing? Uh, yeah, so in the last few months, the team's been up to a lot of work and uh, remembering that it's really long term work. So something that we do today will pay off a bit later on. Um, so some examples, uh, Jess Davison is working in the northeast across Alpine and Toowong Shires. Uh, and actually tomorrow I'll be visiting her to deliver the Ready Community Sessions which is essentially ready plan, but for a whole community. Um, and so in that we're inviting different people. We're inviting community members, we're inviting emergency services, government, people from the health network to all come together and be in the same room to discuss how to progress with that community's recovery and their resilience work as well. Fantastic. So we all we all know what a ready plan is. Um, so ready community is just is a ready plan for the whole community, which is just fantastic. So it's all about being prepared for the next one and um, well-being and, and all those great things um, that we have in a ready plan. Well, wow, that sounds like great work. Um, Doug, tell me about your work in Malakuda. Uh, sure. So I was the recovery officer in Malakuda and far as Gippsland. Now, as you said earlier, I'm the coordinator for resilience and recovery, um, but Celeste has just started in Malakuta as well, and she's new to the role, but she was working as a case manager actually, so she knows the community, she knows the trauma they've been through, and she knows how to support them. Uh, when I was there last year, some of the projects that I worked on, we um, developed a actually a dinner series um, for people who had lost their homes and invited them to that, thinking that at the time people felt quite alone and quite isolated and they couldn't really connect with other people because of what they'd gone through. So we created this special invitation for people to come to this dinner and few people were hesitant at the start and not really knowing what to get out of it but after a few dinners and the last one was at the end of last year um, I had a few people come up to me and just say that like they weren't sure what was this was going to be like but they didn't realize how alone they felt until they came together and realized other people understood what they went through and that was part of really the core of their own recovery. Wow, that's and that's amazing work, and we hear those stories, and you can start to see the community connection starting to to be rebuilt. Yeah. Um, uh, tell me about um, uh, Carissa's work. Yeah, Chris's 
come to bushfire recovery from previous experience in drought recovery, and she's been doing a lot of work to support the um, local government in providing their social opportunities and, and networking opportunities for locals. So a lot of dinners, a lot of lunches, and a lot of um, big events and things where people can really connect and get to know each other again. Um, she did put together some uh, movie nights as well for across East Gippsland, they were fantastic, and deliberately targeted small communities as well that are typically kind of, um, a lot of the, like some of the attention will go to larger communities, and she kind of really deliberated, sorry, really delivered it to the small ones. Um, so a place like Genoa, for example, which is only 50 people and half an hour away from Malacuta, um, we did a movie night there. And afterwards they said, thanks for considering to have the movie night here. Like we normally feel really forgotten and really just kind of sidelined by everyone else. Um, and it's stuff like this that makes us feel like people care about us and haven't forgotten about us. And, that, and that's really the, pa the power of the brand, isn't it? I mean, Red Cross, we're there for the most vulnerable people and um, we keep an eye on those smaller communities as well as the large ones. And, and there's all sorts of things around resourcing and all those things that different people have. So we've got, um, and who else is in your team, mate? So we've got Susie as well, who, who was doing drought recovery previously and now is doing project support and has really brought that experience in supporting communities and really just amplified every other project officer's ability to connect with people as well. It's Susie's there making the phone calls to smaller communities, connecting them and getting them interested in the programs that we can deliver and really can just relate to every person she talks to. Uh, Celeste is brand new and come in, as I said, she's come into Mallacoota as well from, from doing case management previously and just already gets it and has really dived into the deep end to start supporting people straight away. Fantastic. Well, what an amazing team. Um, it's really good to hear um, some of the work that you're doing. And this is only part one of part two, of two parts. So next week, we're going to have a bit more of a talk about some longer term recovery and, and understand a bit more about that work um, because it is years, years and years that we're talking about here um, that we're involved in. Mm. So thanks, Dave. We'll talk again next week. Thanks, Anthony.